Ah, Tom Perry, you're here. Splendid, splendid. We we're going to do the thing with the microphones. Talk about the video games. It was going to be a bloody good time. Wow. Stop my duck. In English. That's bloody good English. What do you mean, Tom Parry? What do you mean it's not English? You're Welsh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, it's only my throat. You there all right? I'm all right, thank you. <laughs> he says as he drinks his lemon. Are, are you recovered now? Yes. <laughs> that was a slurp of a... <laughs> ish. Um, I feel better. I do not have massive migraines. Uh, which... I didn't know you were ill. I was yeah, just referring I... No, no, to no. that. Um, <laughs> no, I, just... I, I was actually ill this week. You were uh, ill? Yeah. I, you didn't I had... tell me you were ill. I, I, you never what, talked to I me was, anymore. I know. Well, I wasn't in work to talk to you. Really? <laughs> no, I wasn't. No. Um, were you I... thinking how I knew? Uh, yeah, I, well, I assumed people had talked about no, it. What, on no the one had talked. No, See, nobody, this is the thing. Nobody, nobody misses me, Tom. <laughs> nobody cares. Um, no, I I was ill in the week. I had a, I don't know, a, around Wednesday. I woke up in the in the early hours of the morning. I was like, oh, I got a bit of a tickly throat. And then I went to work, and I was working. And then I got a migraine that lasted like a day and a half. So that was Dear fun. me. But I'm okay now. I've still got the tickly throat, but at least the headaches, they are gone yeah. like a ship oh, in well, the night. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that, Matthew. Yeah. But other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, How good. are you? Yeah, yeah, not so bad. I cannot complain. I was watching you uh, play with your cat there with this remote control mouse. Yes. And it reminded me of something I picked up recently. Oh, really? As you were controlling it with that small little device, that mini device. It made me think of the Pokemon mini. Oh, you bought one for Tetris. Okay, so oh, I got the Parry. entire collection. Oh, everything really? boxed. Yeah. About 100 quid. I got everything. Wow. Right? That's not bad. And this was uh, down to getting a very uh, cheap Pokemon Mini boxed. Yeah. For 25 quid. Yeah. I think that's good box. That's a good compared price, to yeah. 40 quid I've seen them unboxed on eBay. Yeah. So that's good. Someone was selling, I think they had one or two copies left of the Pokemon Tetris game, which is very rare. I couldn't yes. find another seller selling one of these, no, actually. No. Just it one guy obscure. from Portugal, I think. Yeah. Uh, a box copy. Selling it as new. Uh, it had been opened, but it, it was selling it as new anyway. So yeah. everything was there. So I got that for about £35. And then a Russian seller was selling the rest of the games complete boxed. So well, I snapped that up. And it came to you know just over... Yeah. Just over a hundred pounds, and I thought, well, for an entire for a console and it's the entire collection of video games. I, so, I, are you telling me you have a complete set of Pokemon <laughs> Mini? A, finally, on Retro Collect, I can see that I've got a full set of something. Well, that's cool. Now, all you need to do is get a full set of the N64 and stop dallying around. Hmm. Well, I'm kind of closer to that. Oh, really? Because I bought a Japanese N64. Oh, really? I did. Well, you. I, oh. I mean, maybe I should have suggested it when it's you were in Japan. It's almost as if you should have asked someone who was in mm. the country, because you were probably not... But how much, how much I, did you pay? Okay, I got a Japanese N64, uh, a controller, obviously. Yeah. Uh, ten games. Okay. And um, two memory cards. Yeah. For 105 quid. I could have got you the N64 for I know you could have got tenner. that for nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then inboxed. But what persuaded me to do this was the fact that I have got physical cartridge versions of some of the rarer Nintendo games, and they're very cheap in Japan, it would seem. Some are. Um, things like, I, uh, what the hell is it called? The Castlevania second game. Oh, th- not, that, not that. I'm talking about Mario ones, more closer to home. Oh, okay. So, like, regular ass. Super like... Smash Brothers, every Mario Party. Yeah, they're uh, cheap in Japan because they're everywhere. They're cheap. Okay, so... I got all those ones that I don't have a physical cart of. Uh, Mario Kart included. Yeah. Kirby included. Uh, so it just sort of worked out. The games are bundled with a system that I bought. Uh, seemed like pretty much, apart from, uh, let me think, Yoshi's Story and Blast Core were the only two that I already had. Okay. So I yeah. got M- Mario Kart 64. I said, uh, Kirby, uh, Paper Mario, which, you know, is not really that 
you know, friendly, I with guess, with, with, if you don't know Japanese. But uh, I have it already on the virtual console anyway, so it's not the end of the world. So you just go, like, oh, I have a physical, physical copy. You know? and the, the one I really wanted a physical copy of more than anything was Mario Kart. Yeah. Because nowadays you're going to pay about £20 for a loose cartridge. Yeah. Uh, from my research, yeah, yeah. more for a boxed one, more for an original black boxed one than you would for a, a classic. Yes. Uh, so, you know, all in all, and I got the Evangelion game as well on top of that. Oh, okay. That was an extra. That was 20 quid boxed. Yeah. But So, uh, that and that inspired me to draw up my dream gaming setup. So I, d- I thought, oh, I have a cabinet there. Right. Oh, N64, PAL one, either, PAL Japanese. And either side of the TV, you know, and then the drawers for my cartridges. I was thinking it all out. Yeah. And I drew something up and then I got it all down. That's perfect, right? Oh, yeah. I missed out the GameCube. Oh, no. I totally forgot about the GameCube. And what, I wondered what that said about how I feel about the GameCube. Because I like the GameCube, but it was never a console I ever had much focus on. I, me love the GameCube. Mm. I play my GameCube at least great. once a week because of the biographic yeah. stuff. Um, and I saw that picture you tweeted of your, your GameCube. My cat and your hugging cat. it, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've been a bit busy buying things lately. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> how many how many short of a full N64 collection are you now, well, dare I can't I count the Japanese games, can if I? If you count the Japanese games... I'm still about 40% short. Yeah, so six, I've got about 60%. Maybe. Yeah. What are those forty percent? I'm just curious now. I don't know. The games aren't worth playing. Because I would have bought them by now if they were. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not honestly. I'm not bothered about having a full set. But I'm happy now. I've got those games which I thought I'd never get because I've been able to get them at affordable prices. Yeah. It meant by another system. I'm thinking of sticking a sticker on it, the Japanese flag over the expansion port. Oh. Ah. Okay. There's a little bit of damage on top of the expansion port. That's why I, well, I put mean, that sticker on the you top. You could get one of the expansion packs and paint it entirely white except for a circle of red. Yeah, but oh, you put the lid back on top, don't you? No, you leave the expansion oh, pack out. Well, exposed? An yeah. exposed expansion pack? Yeah, that's why it's got that little red cover on it. Naughty. Exactly. Just show it off. Just be like, yeah. <laughs> no, that means I I'd have to buy an expansion pack for it. Uh, as opposed to just using the regular jumper pack. That's I mean, expansion in. packs surely aren't that expensive. Oh, I don't know. I don't necessarily need one for any of the Japanese games that I've got for No, it. but I mean, you'd be able to play Donkey Kong 64. And I mean, that's I'd something... have to buy Japanese Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> God, yes, please do. Uh, so I do have one game in its box, though, and that's Evangelion. So I'm looking forward to sampling the Japanese N64 packaging, which is quite big. Different size, remember, right? Yeah. It's a uh, portrait, not landscape. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I so wouldn't I'm bother about having everything else in the boxes. but The game would have probably cost you about a quid if you asked me to get a free from Japan. <sighs> Can you do? I only thought about this the other day. <laughs> hey, man. Like, I keep seeing eBay auctions of things I'm following. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not paying that for it. Like, I get a very nice mint mm. Japanese box copy in Japan for about that's, four quid. I think that's reasonable for everything. Like ten games in a console, 100 quid. Doesn't seem that bad. Doesn't seem that bad at all. But it I means mean, I've spent about 200 quid on video games this week. Oh, cool. Doesn't it? Because the Pokemon Mini yeah. and the N64. And, uh, yeah, that's not something I'm particularly proud of. To be <laughs> I haven't actually spent any money on video games since we got paid. Mm. I went to a few... F- flea markets and uh, like charity shops on the weekend. Didn't find anything. I did buy a new hard drive for my PlayStation 3 finally. I got 500 oh, gig mm. uh, hard drive for that. 500 gig, that's good, yeah. yeah I think was, mine's got a 250 in it. It was like 25 quid. And I was like, cool, that will let me play Yakuza mm. 5. Um, because when I played Kenzen, which I've completed, which I'll talk about in a bit, mm-hmm. I put Yakuza 3 in yesterday and I started installing it and it was like, yeah, you need like 3 yeah. gig. And I was like, oh, shit. There's it's always not... the way, isn't it? Yeah. Always the way. Uh, if if you are in the habit of completing a game and then deleting it, then you're going to reach this point sooner rather than later. Yeah. You know, all these people online will get all excited about the new releases and talk about, oh, I'm going to get that, got to get that. And then you think, well, practically... Can you install it on your console? That's what I always think. You know, yeah. everyone's oh, I'm buying all these all these games. Who has the room? Only, I guess, people who play a lot and complete a lot and can delete the things. Because I, 
I certainly can't. Uh, I I complete and delete as much as I can. Complete and delete. That's the that's the thing, isn't it? It is. Um, I mean, I've got a few games that are sat currently on the sidelines because I still have Skylander Swap Force to do on my PS4. I've still mm. got uh, Overcooked to complete, uh, but that's a, a a game when a few friends come over. Yeah. So I haven't really touched that for a while. There's certain things though that maybe are more arcade based, or fighting games or sports games that you necessarily wouldn't want to wouldn't necessarily want to delete. No. Like Call of Duty, for example. You know, you may play it online, Destiny, or whatever. Yeah, much to you, my you annoyance, like to uh, Battlefield 1 is a very big game. Yeah, and you're playing it regularly, so yeah. you can't delete it. No, because just even patching it now would mm. take a significantly long time. Mm. So Star Wars Battlefront, if you play that as well. If you're, you're not tired of the three guns, then that's still taking up a you lot of time. You know what I've been playing lately? Well, today, actually. I picked up for the first time in a while uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Yeah, it's a good game. It's a good game. I've been uh, On Thursday night, I played with my friend Gareth. We played the usual Black Ops 2 on the Wii. So I thought, I feel like Call of Duty, but I found something a bit different. I want some different maps and stuff. Yeah. So I got this copy of Advanced Warfare that I got for next to nothing, sit on the shelf. I played a bit of the story mode, but yeah. I thought, play some multiplayer. And it's surprising how similar it is to... Uh, well, not, it shouldn't be surprising, but it, it plays like you'd expect it to, which I actually really liked because being familiar with Black Ops 2, mm-hmm. it's great to, very easy to jump to this. The only yes. major difference I could see being that you had the new maps, of course, you got to learn, but it's got a double jump. Yep. And it felt very much like Destiny. I, I, th- I thought, okay, this is the same as Destiny, really. Destiny gives me n- nothing more personally than this gives me. You know what I mean? I like the aesthetic of Destiny. Destiny's got a nice aesthetic, that's right. But gameplay-wise, the actual gameplay in the multiplayer feels very similar to me. Because you can do that kind similar. of double jump thing and kind of shoot from above if you, if you play that way. Um, it just made me think of Destiny, that's all. It made me think how Destiny, there really isn't that much to it. Well, I mean, you know, it's essentially Halo. They, they've built a little bit more on top of Halo. Yeah. And then, I mean, Advanced Warfare is then trying to ape that style. Yeah, cause that's the thing, you know, I'm, I enjoyed playing Advanced Warfare more than Destiny yeah. competitively. I like playing Destiny um, cooperatively online, doing the missions and stuff. But competitively, yeah. I found Call of Duty more fun. And also, I was really good at it. Yeah. I was so surprised because usually I'm a bit crap at Call of Duty. Yeah. Well, I thought I was. I think all the weeks I've been practicing, I was finishing in top tier above levels which are much higher than me. Yeah. You know, getting 20 kills in a match, which is it's quite a lot for me, at yeah. least. And then finishing next to someone's like level 40. Yeah. And I just started playing it. But I guess all that experience does mount well, up I mean, and you, you get know, better. You, you did play Destiny for a long while and you have been playing Call of Duty pretty much every week. So, yeah, yeah it makes sense. I guess maybe the pro players aren't playing... Um, Advanced no, Warfare they, anymore, are they? It's they more, are maybe more casual. On Black Ops still, or it, they are... Yeah, Black Ops or Infinite? I don't think many people are playing Infinite Warfare. Why is that? Um, people seem to really push against the idea of Call of Duty in space for some reason. I feel okay. it's not as good. I feel there are a lot of things wrong with that game. Because how but... can you mess it up, really? Yeah. It, more, the multiplayer pretty much is the same every time, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I know there's like war running in Black Ops 3, isn't there? Which yeah. I don't think is in Advanced Warfare. I mean, they warfare. tweak certain things, right? Like different weapons and things. I think there's also like lasers and stuff, which I think the Call of Duty audience rejected flat out. Mm. And that's why they've gone back to World War 2. Yeah, I would assume so. Apparently, though, no references to the Nazis in that game is what I hear. No swastikas. That was the same in uh, Wolfenstein, wasn't it? In yeah, but the that, Euro- w- that, in the was, German that was in Germany. That's right, just a German I mean, version. you know, I I have had Nazi shooting fatigue, as we've talked about while playing Wolfenstein. Mm. Kind of a big aspect of World War Two for the Nazis. <laughs> kind of, yeah, it is. Thinking about it, though, I watched Wonder Woman recently. Yeah. When did the, they adopt the swastika, was that? Was it, they, did they have it in World War One? They was did it not. World War no, II? it was a yes. sign of, World, yes. I, a sign I, I of the it, Third Reich and the I Nazi thought party. it was, yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's, forget that argument. <laughs> no, 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 they, they wouldn't be. If it would have been in Wonder Woman, it would have been super weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the name of the German army was pre-World War II. But yeah, no mind. to be historically matter. accurate, World War Two 
you do you need that, those sort of um, icons. Yeah, or... and I mean, fair play if they're trying to do what Battlefield 1 does to a certain extent and kind of trying to, like, humanise all sides of the wall. But, I mean, mm-hmm. removing swastikas is a bit of a weird thing. But then again, there's so much, like, video game baggage around swastika because of yeah. games like Wolfenstein. I guess they oughtn't have Hitler in Call of Duty. No. Yeah. I, one would assume. But maybe. You never know. Like, maybe they will. I mean, he's kind of a, an important <laughs> figure in this war, you know? I, yeah. I mean... Probably more important than Kevin Spacey. I mean, you've, you had Fidel Castro in yes, uh, Black, Black Ops. Ops. Yeah. So, uh, possibly... It's just if it goes there. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of flack. If it given... goes there, it's got to be sensitive to the subject matter. Yes, exactly. Like, uh, maybe Battle... What's it called? Battlefield. Yeah. Uh, had a human aspect to it, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, in all fairness, though, like, didn't you, like, burst into a room and, like, shoot Fidel Castro in the head? Like, yes. the Bay of Pigs stuff wasn't very sensitively done, so maybe they just, like, okay, after backlash of that, after, like, the stuff that happened to Battlefield with that stupid squad goals hashtag mm. of like when you walk into the club with your boys and they're like setting stuff alight with really? flamethrowers yeah this was a, a PR debacle around the, the launch of Battlefield 1 okay. maybe they're just playing it safe in their trailers and marketing material and stuff I assume maybe it will be in the game but, but um, I enjoy my time with Call of Duty this morning I, I think it's a very playable game yeah. very fun although after three matches I thought I'll leave that <laughs> it's generally how I feel when I play Call of Duty. It's like three <laughs> matches, now nah, I'm good. Yeah, but but for that time, I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I'm <laughs> I'm not a, a person who hates Call of Duty. It's just oh. I get fatigued with that game after playing Modern Warfare to death. Yeah, I hear about them releasing Activision releasing it as a standalone now for Modern forty Warfare, quid, which seems steep for something they were giving away with the other version. Well, I mean, if you if you look at the breakdown of price, uh, I heard this on another podcast, so it's kind of me regurgitating it, but I'm oh, like... Go on. Um, they were saying, well, that that collector's edition that came with this was 80 quid. It was 80. Yeah. I didn't realise it was so, 80. So they're saying... Whereas most people were seeing that as like 55 or whatever, like however much it was for the game, 60 for quid, both. and then like 20 quid for this. Maybe you were actually putting 40, 40. Maybe they were charging you the full price of that, and that's why that you can look expensive. at it like that, but usually new games retail prices are above forty pounds. I mean, you know, Black Ops re-entered the pre-order charts once that game had been released on Xbox One backwards compatibility. Like it entered the number ten. People love Black Ops Two that much that it shot back into the charts. Mm. So maybe they're also afraid that they this will detract from their World War Two shooter. Who knows? Maybe they're afraid that a lot of people will just buy that instead. Hmm. But I, modern warfare, old warfare. This I there's mean, an option. There's, they are different from each other. They are different from each other. And but I mean, they kind of want to maybe release something that would appeal to both uh, fan bases. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at the track record of Call of Duty, it's in steady decline. Mm. Like Infinite Warfare didn't sell very well at all for Call no, of Duty. No, no, he got discounted heavily. I remember he, trying to get a copy of Black Ops Three is more expensive than buying Infinite Warfare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's interesting. Maybe, maybe we are on the the coattails of Call of Duty taking a year off, Assassin's Creed style. It depends how well the World War Two one. I, th- goes, I think so because I mean, if if your World War Two game doesn't do very well, then what do you do? But I think there's definitely a gap in the market for that. They didn't go World War One, obviously, because Battlefield's got that yeah. covered. So perhaps it's got some um, stiff competition though. Really, because I think when the older Call of Duty games were quite critically acclaimed for what they did yeah. and how they handled it, I mean, they've kind of got to better what they've already done there. Yeah. Whereas before they would just move to Modern Warfare and say, well, we've kind of done what we can with World War Two, World War One. Yeah, because, I, no. I mean, Call of Duty 1 is an incredible campaign. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty 2 less, so that was more about multiplayer for me. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty Three is a terrible game. Is it uh, really? They, they tried. I to don't make, know. They tried to make Battlefield because Battlefield Two was huge, mm. and so they tried to make it so you were realistic. They tried to make you have classes, so like you could be a medic or you were a right. an assault class or a heavy trooper or whatever. And there was a lot of 
quick time events from what I remember I've of that campaign. I've got it for the Wii, but I've hardly played it. I don't know how the Wii version I compares. I think the Wii one isn't even the proper game. I think mm-hmm. it's the PS2 title, which is called Call of Duty 3 Finest Hour. Oh, Call of Duty 2 Finest Hour, isn't Call it? Call of Duty 2 Finest Hour. There's a yeah. Call of Duty 3 game that I can't remember the name of, though, that mm. is a PS2 game. And there's Call of Duty World at War. Didn't have that a couple of different versions Call of well. Duty World at War also has a PS2 game I own it. Yeah. I've never played it. Yeah, Claire, my girlfriend, she's got the, um, the Wii one. Yeah. She rather enjoyed that. Yeah, you said. That's why I was kind of curious <laughs> to pick up the PS2 one. Yeah. Um, oh, it didn't it have matter. a different subtitle. Subtitle, World at War something or other. Yes, it does. Um, I, I remember Modern Warfare on the Wii was called Reflex Edition. I've got that. I don't think Modern Warfare came out on the PS2. No. But the Wii was I think big at just... the time, I guess. So. No, no, no. It's called Call of Duty. Call of Duty Finest Hour is not 2. Uh, 2 is a big red one. How can oh, we forget? sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Didn't Finest Hour come out on the GameCube, though? Finest Hour did come out on the GameCube, yeah. You're right. I think. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Call of Duty. The history of Call of Duty. It's an interesting uh, subject. Yes, too. It's not something we've spoken much about on the podcast. No, there is. Yeah, you're right. It is. There is a straight Call of Duty 3 for the PS2. And I assume it is the same as the Wii one. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Interesting. Well, you've learned something today. There's like seven (laughs) Call of Duty games for the PS2 then. There's a few, isn't there? I've got most of them, I think. We should do a video on playing Call of Duty on the PS2. I bet I, that's I think that would be really fun. Yeah, really let's do it. Let's do it. Let's commit to that on the podcast and then never mention <laughs> it again. Um, what else have you been playing, Tom? Oh, me? Yeah. Gosh, I feel like I've talked a lot already. How All about right. yourself? I can I can talk about what I, I'm dubbing the year of Yakuza. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> right. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Call, Call of Duty 1. Uh, Call of Duty 1. Uh, Yakuza 1, done. Yakuza 2, done. Yakuza Kenzen, I've now finished. Well done. Um, did you see the thumbnail I did for the last podcast? I didn't know. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. You can check that later. I saw, I saw Mario's hat. Uh, yeah, but three coming out of it. for the other one, I I was struggling to find a PNG of the character. Yeah. Because he'd like to use PNGs so you don't have to cut them out in Photoshop, right? Yeah. And the only one I could find was his arms outstretched, you know, like the character model. Yeah. So I did him like flying through the air with a rainbow coming <laughs> Oh man, I need to check that out. If you haven't yeah. checked that out, <laughs> facebook.com forward slash Tom Matt Attack. Uh, also on blastprocess.com. Um, yeah, Kenzen. Very good game. Uh, lots of. Japanese. Great characters, <laughs> lots of story, lots of Japanese. Are you to- better at Japanese now after playing that? Not directly. No. I mean, I, I practiced my. Hiragana and Katakana going, that's an A, that's a an R, that's a Chi. Like but I played it played it through, enjoyed some of the end battles. Ooh. It kinda goes a bit Dynasty Warriors at one point. Where oh. you, you go into a field and you have a duel with a guy and it turns out that his school actually wanted you to kill him so they could try and take over his dojo and then you're running around a giant field of wheat like Theresa May killing samurais. Which is pretty interesting. Why trees remain the fear of the wheat? I missed this one. How did you not miss? How did you miss this? That was that a political joke. No, that was that was her saying the naughtiest thing she ever did was run around the field of wheat. Anyways, I missed. I missed non-British that. people are just like, what the fuck are you talking I about? I think a lot of people know who trees remain yeah. is. <laughs> Unfortunately. Anyways, um, yeah. So you run around this giant like circle uh, areas in this wheat field killing samurais and stuff mm. a lot of them coming at you at a time and then there's a battle towards the end of the game where you are literally there are just swarms of enemies coming at you and you're just swatting them off like flies with your, your samurai sword yeah. it's interesting um come a, a lot of the intrigue that i had at the start of that game is kind of misplaced as you go through it kind of becomes almost a Naruto Shouen Jump-esque. Like, I need to be stronger. I need to prove that I am the oh. man with the sword. Oh. And, like, everyone trying to challenge uh, Miyamoto Masashi to say, hey, I I am the master of this style, but you have beaten me and proven to me that there is more to strength than than the sword. It is all okay. friendship. Hiya. Oh, um, friendship. Yes. And so by the end of that game, I was like, okay, this has some very good moments. It has some very, it has some feels, has some laughs, has mm. some tears. 
I was like, okay, that's that's a good game. I yeah. look forward to playing it when I can actually understand Japanese properly and not have to rely on subs. Did you feel, feel content? I did. Mm, so content, in fact, Tom Parry, that I have to beat Bubble Bobble for this week's uh, biographic. Which I watched. Well done. Thank you. Nice video. Um, I went in and played some Yakuza 3. Oh. I spent a lot of my evening last night until 2 o'clock in the morning, actually. Matthew Boyle. Three. Um, purely Tom Parry. Because very good, I bet. I wanted to know what the <laughs> fuck Yakuza 3 was because Yakuza 1, serious, critty, like, yes, this is a Takeshi Kitano movie, Yakuza's, it's all very serious, it's all about families, it's all about honour. Yeah. Yakuza 2 dials that up to 11. <laughs> yeah. Yakuza Kenzen, show and jump story, kind of similar, like, oh, it's all very serious, mm. revenge, revenge. The start of Yakuza 3 is essentially a prologue where you see things going down and you're like, what the absolute fuck is going on? Um, You run into a hospital. There's two guys you work with that you have no idea who they are. Um, Kazuma is running an orphanage. Uh, A guy who looks like Oyobun, uh, who is uh, his father, who dies at the end of the first game, turns up and shoots one of the main characters. And you're like, what the fuck is going on here? And it's all crazy. And then it's just like, okay, yeah, like, one year earlier. It's like, okay, I, what? So how did they all end up in this situation? And so it starts directly after the end of uh, Yakuza 2. Mm. And it's just kind of like, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, this girl who I fell in love with, who I, I betrayed my clan for and killed person, yeah, you're going to go to America to be a police officer. Okay, cool, I'm going to go run an orphanage. So that all feels very abrupt, and it's like, yeah, but you were you were building these characters up to be like a romantic interest, and like kind of like Rio and uh, Nozomi. Yeah, and kind of <laughs> kind of one does the start of uh, the end of Yakuza Two, and kind of why I really like the end of Yakuza Two because it was very heartfelt. Yeah. And there's a scene where you think, uh, sorry, spoilers for Yakuza Two at this point, a 15 year old game. I haven't played it. Um, <laughs> you're there, and you're. Skip the next minute if you don't want another spoiler. You're there, you're on a skyscraper, you're afraid this bomb is going to go off, and like they're both confessing to each other how much they love each other. It's a Romeo and Juliet story, she's yeah. a cop, he's a Yakuza, da 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 da. And as they're waiting for the bomb to go down, they kiss, and like they hold each other as if the bomb is going to explode, and then it doesn't, because it turns out that one of the guys you knew disabled the bomb, blah 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 mm. blah. But it, it leaves you waiting because it clicks to zero as the credits cut in, and you're oh. like, oh no, Kazuma's dead! But obviously not, because. There's more Yakuza games now. Mm. I, I imagine it would have had a lot more impact back yeah. in the early 2000s. So has it has it uh, found its own, come into its own yet? Three. It's starting to be the Yakuza that people on the internet are going nuts for Yakuza about. Okay. Um, so, for example, you see this this young guy, and I think his name's Ryaka or something like that, and he is the Yakuza on this small island where you have an orphanage off the bottom south coast of Japan because. Kazuma's been like, okay, I'm going to look after Haruka. I'm going to get the fuck away from this Yakuza lifestyle because even though I got out to the end of the first game, they dragged me back in in the second. I don't want this. I want to look after kids. I want to be a responsible adult for this girl, blah, 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 blah. And you're there and you're on this small island and these guys are trying to close down your orphanage and try and muscle you Mm. and you're like, no, I'm Kazuma. Bugger off. Yeah. And so this guy is just like, oh, yeah, man, I saw that tattoo on your back. I've got a sick tattoo of my own. He pulls off his Hawaiian shirt and he's got like, he's got a snake on his back, but it's clearly like a doofy looking snake with no eyes. Mm. And you're like, okay, what's going on here? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm a big man. And then you obviously just beat the shit out of him really easily. And so there's this weird, like, it's starting to get a bit silly in places. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I can, I can do this, because it's been... I don't think I could endure, like... I lined <laughs> all the copies of Yakuza I had up yesterday, and I, I don't know if I could do, like, 17 games of, like, gritty crime drama. Yeah. So it's starting to become a bit doofy and a bit into its own. But that being said, I've played, like, six hours of Yakuza mm. 3, I think. Yeah. And I'm on the fifth chapter, and I feel like I've only now started the game. I've only now gone back to the area that Yakuza is set in in Japan and before that I've pretty much just been looking after the kids in the orphanage <laughs> and I was, I've been wondering why I needed to spend six hours playing hide and seek with children really? And That's a mini game so- 
I, I played golf, Tom. Oh. Like, I went to a golf course to talk to a man who was, like, um, on this island that I can't remember the name of where the, the orphanage is. Mm. Uh, there's a guy who's, like, a, a senator, and so you go to this golf club to talk to him because one of your okay. kids is getting bullied. Mm. And so you go there, and you accidentally bump into him, and he asks you to play a game of golf against him. And you play golf, and like, and they have they have clubs, and you need to like take in wind resistance. Wow! And then you just play that, and then it's done. And then there's and a fishing mini game, and it's it's quite an in depth fishing mini game. And then you play yeah. baseball, and then seems like a very Japanese uh, angle to yeah have on uh, an adventure game like this. They kind of just were like, okay, cool. We were on the PS2. We have the same fighting system. PS3. No, no, I'm saying like we were on the PS2. We have the fighting system for that. And then when they moved over to the oh. PS3. They were just like, hey, we can we have all of this other space to make all of this other stuff. Mm. I do have some reservations with it, though. There's some kind of stuff that they were clearly... that weren't very noticeable in Kenzen because Kenzen was a very enclosed area. Goyen, the, the area where that place, the game takes place, and like the fields around it are very linear places. They tried to make a city in this one where you start and spend the first six hours, and it feels very restrictive. There are like Shemu, lots uh, restrictive. and lots Lights. of invisible walls oh, right. and lots of like roads that end abruptly okay. with <clears throat> signs and things and loads of things you can't pass. Oh, right. That's a shame when it's not small. You know, you want small and contained, but yeah. when it looks seems bigger than you can actually explore, then that's a little bit frustrating. Which is very it? odd because Yakuza 1 and 2 did that very well. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, this is interesting. And so you because Shenmue never manages to feel like that, does no, it? No, it, it doesn't. It feels like there aren't any way you can't really go. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, there are lots of there are lots of back alleys, there are lots of side packages, and like places you can go in and convenience stores and all this. But at least that starting area, I don't know. Then when I get to Tokyo now, if that's going to suddenly explode and you can go everywhere, but it, I don't think it will be. I think it'll just be remodeled version of Yakuza 1. And so mm. I'm like, okay, is is this going to get better in 4? I assume it'll get better in 5. But at the moment, it feels mm. like th- that the team is struggling with the PS3 and the capabilities of it. Okay. And perhaps also... Even though they had Kenzen to kind of get used to the hardware. Kenzen looks better. Yeah. That's the weird thing about it. Kenzen's a beautiful self-contained experience. Like, there's so many amazing moments in Kenzen. Like, did this was this being made at the same time as Kenzen? No, this no. came afterwards. So they started I, work uh, on it after yeah, they finished. They Kenzen. finished Kenzen and then they made this. Yeah. And like Kenzen's got some of the like the best moments of experience in the game. Like you're walking across a bridge and like you know you bump into people in Yakuza and you fight with them, and you could just be walking along and minding your own business, and then suddenly like you get a quick time event and you've got to draw your sword because some mm. like guy who's randomly passing yeah. you tried to like sneak attack you. And yeah, it's interesting. They've taken a lot of the, the mechanic, like the mechanical things as well. Like uh, you can now equip weapons the same way you could in Kenza. And there are a lot of menu and sub menu things they've taken. You can reminisce. Do you ever fire a gun? In uh, a you do. It is very slow and very clunky okay. for the purpose that you should be able to kill people with guns otherwise they they hit very hard but they're very mm. slow and clunky okay. and you have to aim them and then shoot All like right. it feels a bit like resident evil mm. i was curious because I've, I've never shot anyone in the accused game later later levels you will run into people with guns people mm. with shotguns but then again i haven't played guns. a lot of yakuza <laughs> yeah but all in all like i'm interested Purely by the Oyobun stuff of like his dad who clearly died at the end of the first game, mm. and how are they going to explain that? But Yakuza 2 that... had a lot of stuff with like cl- crazy lookalikes and stuff. So yeah, it could be his brother. His dad's uh, I, twin brother. That is my assumption is yeah. that it is his brother, or it is like another doppelganger or something. But we'll see. Like, I'm interested enough to keep playing, but I. I don't know. There's some aspects of this game so far that I think them having this open canvas and this established game IP, the kookiness and the seriousness yeah. haven't balanced out yet. Okay, yeah. And so I think it will take this game to kind of adjust the tone a bit and maybe address their own issues with scope for the game, and I'm hoping Yakuza mm. 4 will be better for it. 
but we'll see. And then Akusa 5 came out as a download only. Is that Akusa right? Akusa 5 came out here as download only. It yeah. was released physically in Japan, which is why I have a And then Japanese Yakuza copy. 6 is the one with the Takeshi Kitano in. Yes. And that is using the Dragon engine, I believe it's called, and it's purely made for PS4. So using Whereas, the engine at Zero? No, Zero, no. Uh, Ishen, and uh, even the the newly released uh, remake of uh, the first game yeah. are all using, I believe, maybe not the remake, uh, the, the engine that was used for the Yakuza PS3 games. Oh. Because they, they are on both systems. Oh, you can yeah. buy Zero and you can buy Yashen for PS3. I have Yashen on PS3, but yeah. obviously Yakuza uh-huh. 4 came out in Europe and yeah. on PS4. Yes, so. okay. I. Yeah, I'm mm. I'm curious to play more of it. I'll get into it, but like, you've got a lot to play though if you're going to play them all. I have. Um, I'm I'm not going to play Ishen because there is no English translation for it. Oh, yeah, right. the same okay. with the PSP games actually. Right, but it's still like it's still like six games for me to get five through. to do, and then I've you got go three, back to zero, four Dead Souls, five, oh, yeah, Dead Souls, yeah. zero, and then the remake, the first one. You, so you're going to go off the back of zero into the first yes. one again, yeah. Hmm. See how that... Yeah, see how that is. transitions. Yeah, yeah. Into, yeah. Cause it may, from what you were saying about the whole storyline concerning the main character, um, it feels like they're trying to stretch it out a little bit in three. You know, you said it's kind of, kind of wrapped up a little bit. So logically, I'd think going back to a prequel would make a lot of sense. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that there's so many games after Yakuza 2... Maybe, yeah, as you say, maybe just find its its well, way and manage to progress that character's storyline in a interesting way that makes sense. I think the biggest issue that they've had with the Yakuza series is people love Kazuma Kiryu. Yeah. Um, six is the last game where Kazuma Kiryu will be the main protagonist. Yeah. He's I not th- the only protagonist, is he? In he's some not. Of the games, no, uh, I think from four, four and five, and even six have different characters you play as. Mm. But I think they. W- I think how this game starts is this guy with a snake tattoo on his back. Uh huh. I think maybe he is being billed as the next Kazuma, and maybe you play as him in four. I don't really know. I, I've tried not to look ahead. Hmm. But from my understanding of reading comments of people, um, their regards to Six and this kind of stuff, like people just love Kiryu. Mm. I think he is that series for a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's all very interesting. Maybe one day I'll get around to playing one of them myself. Yeah, yeah. Or you can just <laughs> listen to me talk about it. That's fine. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> uh, what else have I been playing then? Uh, Mickey's Wild Adventure on the uh, PS1. Yeah, yeah, so I got a download copy for PS3 and uh, I've been playing it on the Vita, actually. And it's a really nice improvement over the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo originals. Yeah. Uh, the graphics have been redone and, uh, yeah, it's really enjoyable game. It's quite hard. Yeah, I think the difficulty has been ramped up in this version as well. But uh, for some reason, I keep coming back to it and it's weird because it, I don't know what it is exactly because it is uh, it, sometimes the death feel unfair in it like they're not down to skill they're down to the way the game's designed yeah it? but i guess there's just some adjusting to how that game plays because there's a lot of frames of animation and the platforming isn't like most platform games it's a little bit more um linear perhaps is this the one with like uh the greenish cover with him swinging on a yeah. rope and like uh this is uh where you, you play through uh classic mickey mouse cartoons and at the time it was the first game to feature animation hand-drawn by disney i yeah. think aladdin popularized disney being heavily involved with the the games and providing Which means this mickey's animation. wild adventure yeah it's originally known as mickey mania on ah, the Mega Drive Super Nintendo. Okay. Uh, yeah. But Europe, and only Europe, got a PS1 version. I had Mickey's. I, yeah, I, I remember playing Mickey's Wild Adventure. It starts with Seen But Willie, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Level. And it has things that were only in the Mega CD version no, of I Mickey Mania. For example, the, the voice acting, the original Mickey Mouse voice I, actor from, I think, from 70s onwards. It was one of his last uh, performances as Mickey. Not only did I not realise that those were the same game that Mickey Mania and Mickey's Wild Adventure yeah. were the same thing, but I didn't even realise there was a Mega CD version of it. Yeah, uh, which uh, 
suffers from a few load times, but apparently even the Super Nintendo version has load times. I watched a video on it. The, the Mega Drive version uh, at the time was the best way to play the game, but yeah. I think the, the the PlayStation version is probably the definitive version. Uh, there's 3D graphics in it as well, uh, occasionally. So I remember rather than pseudo 3D, it's actually proper 3D bits. Oh, is it a pseudo 51 game, is it? Uh, <laughs> But it's a fun game. I don't know. It's Traveller's Tales, uh, one yeah. of their early games, and they did quite a few Disney games. They did the, the Toy Story and um, also did the Pinocchio game as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I like the game. I don't know. Yeah. It's got something. It's got some sort of magical uh, thing about it. Yeah. I can't quite place, put my finger on it, because I die a lot. Yeah. But it's one of those games where the more you play it, the better you get. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Uh, so a bit of that, a bit of retro platforming. Uh, it's always fun, isn't it? And also, so I played a few games that I featured on the latest episode of Paris Pickups, which you can see on the Blast Process YouTube channel. Sorry, Japanese SNES game. Yeah, that's uh, Muscle Bomber. Yeah, uh, Muscle Bomber is the Japanese version of a game called uh, Saturday Night Slam Masters. Oh, which yes. Which was you mentioned Capcom's you 2D one-on-one fighter come wrestling game. Yeah. And it's really interesting how they meld the two things because it feels very much like Street Fighter in its presentation, some of the uh, typography, and it's just straight out of Street Fighter, and the whole setup feels very Street Fighter 2. Yeah. But then again, the mechanics when you're playing the game, they implement wrestling bits and pieces, like being able to jump onto the turnbuckle, get out of the ring, pick up weapons, pinning the opponent to win the match. Yeah. And it's I would say, I said this in the video, it's probably best wrestling game of the 16-bit era, even though it really isn't technically a wrestling game. Yeah. But it has so much uh, element, so many elements of wrestling in it that it sort of creates interesting sort of middle ground <laughs> that's re- really fun. Uh, when I say it's connected to Street Fighter 2, it really is. I mean, there's a character like uh, Blanca, uh, who did just did the same movie, jumps on you and bites your face, you know, just like Blanca does. Does uh, anyone do a Russian cyclone? I think that yeah, Hagger's yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, is that there's the cyclone where he puts his yeah, arms yeah. out and spins. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's that huh. move. Uh, but that's performed by Hagger from Street uh, Final Fight. Does he? So. Does he do a pile driver? Is he just Zangief? There, there, there are Zangief pile drivers Good. in there. There. Yeah, it's a really fun game, and I'm not sure how many people are aware of the game. Uh, but I think it was originally an arcade game. Yes. It's well worth tracking down. I think it's one of the great uh, undiscovered 2D fighters of its generation. It is incredibly expensive, though, right? I think the PAL versions are expensive. Yeah, the Japanese version, like most Japanese versions of uh, obscure games, uh, it's very affordable and well worth tracking down. Yeah. I would say. Uh, One that isn't worth tracking down is Battle Blaze, which was released outside of Japan. Uh, it's a sort of medieval weapons-based fighter from Sammy, and uh, it's not very good. No? It's only got two attack buttons from what I can work out, and I couldn't do any special moves in it, and so the gameplay feels incredibly limited, and, and it's not very fun. Uh, the controls are also unresponsive, so there's a delay in you inputting moves. and I think uh, aesthetically it's quite nice, and the character designs and the animation, the uh, environments you fight in are rather cool, but... It suffers from really bad fighting mechanics, I yeah. think. I don't know why there's only two buttons that seem to do anything on the controller, because there's plenty of buttons on a Super Nintendo <laughs> controller. So I would not recommend that one. That's a shame. Uh, NBA 2K16, it looks very nice. I, I was saying again in the video that my problems with 2K13 on the Wii U was the menus were terrible. Yeah. You know, neg- Navigating your way through them was ridiculous, and the visuals weren't much to shout about but what do you expect from a game which i think was released in 2012 Mm -hmm. uh this one beautiful visuals the best create a character i've ever encountered it's very versatile interesting it's really good uh but didn't manage to save this character i spent ages making Uh. and he reverted back to a generic one which was quite shocking when i jumped into this new uh spike uh lee Lee joint joint uh story mode where it <laughs> there's actually an FMV introduction with Spike Lee as he talks uh, to you about this experience. Really? Yeah, and you can see it in the video. And uh, yeah, then it goes into this computer-generated world where the actor 
who's playing the character that you eventually assume, his face turns into um, the character you've created. And okay. he just turns into this generic, bald-looking man who looks like Vin Diesel. And I was like, that's not the character I made. And it was all very disappointing. I think you made the wrong choices then if your character doesn't look like Vin Diesel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You looked a bit to, like me. I, not I mean, to judge was... you, Tom, but... You you know. Check it out in the video. It's pretty cool. So it's a good basketball game, and it's got great graphics and uh, good menus, which is what it really needed to have, Yeah. and all those extra icings on the cake. Your low bar of it must have good menus is... Well, you must be able to find out what you're doing easily. No, of course. You know. I mean, you know, navigation is key to you experiencing the game. It does sort of this insist you sign up for some sort of online account if you want to play online, which I don't know if there's any online servers for it anymore. But it's quite frustrating. It says, oh, you can't access certain elements of the game if you can't go online and sign up for this. I like, no, no. Don't. You can't access the following things unless you sign up for a 2K16 sports account. Oh, Anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Annoying. Uh, but it was very affordable. That's 50 kroner. Um, happy to have it on the uh, Xbox One. And what made me think, actually, you know, I was talking about getting a, a game of every type of sport on every console I own. I'm, I think I'm going to avoid getting sports games for PS4 because... You know, games take up a lot of hard drive space, as we were talking about earlier. This particular game takes up 45 gig, right? Yeah. Why do I need to take up 45 gig on both my consoles as basketball games? I only really need one, don't I? Yeah. That's how I feel about okay, it. Okay, cool. So uh, even though I've got a couple of sports games for my uh, PS4, I don't think I'm going to buy any more because I, I kind of I'll have my Xbox One. You know, for my you know what the issue games. is? You just delete it when you're not playing it. Yeah, but sports game is like a fighting game or a core duty type game. You want to jump in, in and out of it if you have friends over and you want to play a basketball game and then you can't how say, oh, I've got to. How often does that occur? Well, I'm, how I'm ready for every come eventuality. to your house and say, you know what, I really would love to play some NHL. Can we play some National Hockey League well, 2014, who, who please? Who knows? Hasn't happened yet, Matthew. But it I, never I, will, I, I guarantee you. Maybe I'll fancy playing one with somebody and I'll convince them to play the game with me and then you'll go cool let's jump from that to basketball and then to madden hey uh back in the uk uh i'll, I'll play a few sports games with friends it's not out of the question primarily fifa though right no actually more, more like golf yeah but I, I like <laughs> golf golf is golf tom i played golf in yakuza don't talk to me about golf i know all about it now uh i got the atari flashback collection yeah. volume one and uh the arcade ports are great in there there's yeah. some good fun arcade games some of those 2600 games aren't so much fun are they no they fucking suck tom that's <laughs> why i've not got an atari here like at um, the time wow the 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 games that are based on arcade games like centipede and millipede and uh some other games i can't quite think of at the moment are pretty good uh except the version of tempest for the 2600 which is horrible um much rather play the uh original yeah um there's, I'd say there's about 10. There's about 50 games on it, and there's about 10 that are worth playing. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I got it discounted slightly, so um, it felt more worth my while. But there's no one playing it online when I tried. There's, it boasts this online multiplayer. Yeah, but I mean, that requires you everyone to have copies of this game and say, you know what, I would really like to play Space Invaders online. No Space Invaders. <sighs> You know what I mean? The point still stands. <laughs> that no one's going, wow, you know what I, I would love is this old 1970s, early 80s But some experience. of those games are really good. Uh, Dodgem is like Power Racer. And yeah, the, Dodgem. Uh, yeah, Dodgem yeah. is fun. <sighs> yeah, it, um, it's difficult. There's, I think Stronghold is the one where you have a fort in each corner and you've got to protect your fort with your sort of like pong-like paddles. Yeah. That's a fun game. Uh, but in this, you, you jump into it as single player. Yeah. Uh, none of the there's no sort of computer AI, so unless you play multiplayer, you're only playing with yourself. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's that's not so much fun. No. But I, I really like Black Widow, which is one where you're a spider on a spider's web, and you just it's waves of enemies. It's a twin stick shooter type game. That's fun. I remember the. 2600 version of Galaxian being okay. Mm, I've got that. Most of the games that I really, really liked on the 2600 are actually licensed mm, titles. Mm. 
I tell you what, Pong is hard to play because of the sensitivity of the analog stick. Really? Really difficult, you know, and then if you use the D-pad, then it's not accurate enough. You can't get that kind of minute uh, movements you need to get. Yeah. But on That's the stick, shame. I find you have to kind of push backwards on the stick while you move up and down. You know, you know push to the left, mm -hmm. if depending on what side of the screen you're on, to, and then move up and down to get some sort of control over the paddle. Wow, the two seems... versus Tetris is the arcade one, not Tetris. So Tetris on the brain pong. still, Pong, uh, and then there's uh, Pong uh, Sports. How do you mess well. up Pong? Like if you're well, making it's just an a Atari controller, I, I think if you had uh, a different controller, it would play fine. But the PS4, I mean, it's meant to be played with a paddle. Yeah, that's how I remember playing Pong. Anyways, when we had the and it should be pong. played with a paddle, I think. Yeah, but it doesn't translate that well. So, eh, wouldn't rush out and buy it. No. Although yeah. it's got very good reviews, actually, on Amazon, at least. You know, a lot of people are very Do you buy a physical copy of it in I've the GameStop sale? Or? Yeah, I did. It's about 150 I think, yeah. Krona. Because I've been curious about it because I don't have a 2600, and I thought, well, you know, that feels like a gap in my collection, those games. And so yeah. I, I'd like to experience them, but I don't want to go out of my way to buy the console and the cartridges. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need that. So I thought this would be a good way to sample some of those games. But the problem being is you've got it spread across two volumes, so they can't put all the good games on one volume. Which is ironic because they're like 8KB mm. each. Like they could have easily done Oh, you could easily it. have stuck them all on one. But now, for the full collection, you're paying double the price. It, yeah. You should be able and, to get all those games. And again, the best less. games on the 2600 are generally licensed titles. Mm. They're generally Empire Strikes Back. It's things like um, Raiders of the Lost Ark was a pretty good game on the 2600, mm. from what I remember. Um, Circus yeah, Atari is fun. M <laughs> Mario Brothers on the 2600 mm. was quite fun. Mm. There, there are good 2600 games. I mean, you have adventure, you have things like Pong, you... It's you, got a few... Um, you have Galaxia and you have Galga, like Pitfall and all of these ah, other things. Yeah, Pitfall's a good one. I guess it doesn't cut of anything from publishers like Activision. It's got to have all uh, Atari-owned yeah, published is the thing. games. Yeah, and this Like, most of those games are now available elsewhere and mm -hmm. in better versions. I don't know these these oh yeah like improved versions yeah. from the twenty six hundred. I I will say for it the menus are quite nice and the um the conversions feel very solid. You know these don't feel like uh, messed up no. conversions of the games. And I mean it? they shouldn't right because they I mean, shouldn't because I can't imagine it's very hard to emulate a twenty six hundred. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, actually, there's not a lot going on to 20... emulate. The 2600, I believe, was the first console to be emulated because mm. it is it is just like programming for a PC is very simple mm. programming. But it does lines. all those scan lines and stuff, and there are some options you can turn on and off um, if you want that kind of thing. Yeah, feel. but that's just a visual thing anyways because, I mean, that's just trying to replicate a CRT. It's not trying to replicate the game. No, of course not, no. But it is at least offering you something like that. I don't know if it was worth 150 kroner, though, like... If, 15 quid for that, yeah. you could have probably bought the games for no, I was thinking, Atari. I was thinking it would be the cheapest way to play some of these games. There's probably a PS2 collection as well, which maybe is better. I, Yeah, I'm 90% sure. There's probably like a DS collection also. There's probably There a is a DS collection, I think, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. Got it. It's all right. What can you do? Oh gosh, that's like depressing, isn't it? <laughs> they talk, I talked about the Pokemon Mini, didn't I? You did, yeah. What about this recent uh, sort of retro revival that's going on right now? Crash, Crash Bandicoot's been released. Yes, it's it has. It's a remastered uh, version. Micro Machines is back again yep. in a new version, which I've heard very mixed things about. Really? Actually. It's got no single player. It's, it's, it's bare bones uh, multiplayer. Well, uh, it is a budget title, but I just expected that's because it's a top-down racer. Yeah, not because. But it... it's come on some heavy uh, criticism from fans, at least that it doesn't have anything for single player. Yeah, that kind of sucks. That's kind of. Uh, so of I don't even think there's any AI races. If you want to race against someone, you've got to play online or with friends uh, wow. on couch co-op. Yeah, that sucks. But for the purposes, I want to play this game, which would be with friends online uh, or in person, if possible. Yeah. Then. Uh, I think uh, I, I picked it up 
I haven't got it yet. I've delivered, uh, got it delivered to the UK, but I think for that reason, it'll be quite fun. Yes. But yeah, it's a shame it's got no single player. And, yeah, and I feel like it's like it's sort of like a warning because if you want to go, a lot of people go into this game thinking, oh, it must have some sort of single player. You'd expect that at least. I mean, it doesn't really feel like it would be that hard to do a single player for that either. No. Uh, it's oh. weird. It's it's sort of like um, Street Fighter. Yeah. Coming out with no real uh, options for single player or or um, Battlefront. Yeah. Yeah. Star In- Wars Battlefront. Interesting. It's a trend that I don't like. I'm interested to play Crash though. Yeah, I I've seen good things actually. Like yeah. people people are talking quite highly of that game. Yeah. I'm curious to see how much of that is nostalgia though because. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of nostalgia attached to it. Because these games, you know, essentially they're still the same games they were though that many years ago where the physics engine's been redone, the graphics have been redone, but the actual level design itself, I think, is the same as it was back in the day. Yes. Uh, so I'm sure it's it's got to show its age. I would assume so. I mean, you know, a lot of things have happened since then. Mm. But, yeah, see what goes right, like... Yeah, it's not something I'm going to rush out and buy. It seems I don't to have sold out in a lot of places in the UK, which is super interesting for me because I I had never expected that mm. everyone to run out and get it. And I perhaps, hopefully, this is a sign in the signal that people want more Crash Bandicoot games that are closer to the core of what Crash Bandicoot was. But we'll see. Yeah, I wonder if a proper Crash sequel to these games um, would be, be better. Yes. You know, because this is just a kind of hit those nostalgia buttons and to see if there's interest in Crash and whatever comes next will probably be a more interesting game, maybe? Yeah. But there is something to be said about the original Crash games and their design. You know, they were fun. But uh, they could do with a bit of an up- more of an update, perhaps. They could. So, yeah, I'm not going to rush out and buy it, but I, I would like to play it. Something I did play was uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the uh, demo. Yeah, how was that, the story demo? It felt a lot like Marvel's Capcom 3. Okay. That's right, isn't it? 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot like that. Visuals are very nice. And I, I love this uh, story element that uh, basically you play, you see a little cutscene where it introduces a situation and you've got a Capcom character and a, uh, sorry, a, a Marvel character interacting with each other. Uh, which is and Thanos? There's no Thanos in this demo. Who is it with Sigma then? Like uh, Ultron. Oh, it's Ultron. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Ultron and um, Sigma have uh, merged yeah. to make this um, villain. I had, I had assumed Thanos. So but, yeah. you start off with um, Thor and Z- is it Zero. I would make assume, a so blonde red sword. No. Is he red? No, he's not. He's blue. Maybe Mega Man X. I don't know what. Probably he is. Mega Man X. Yeah. So. And then you've you've got other little uh, um, partnerships in there. You've got I liked I particularly liked uh, Arthur with Thor. They had a little bit of a, a fun dialogue together. Arthur from uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah. And so yeah, the, those are good. It kind of strengthens the, the the bond between the characters that they're actually interacting. You know, you, it's cool. And then the actual fighting was fun. They've introduced this sort of like easy combo thing where you just press square. Yeah. Over and over again, and it launches them up into the air. That felt like a very cheap and easy way to do some real damage rather than doing actual proper moves. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of tempting just to do that when you need to get an upper hand. Um, you're fighting a lot of kind of drone-like enemies in this demo. There's only really one proper character-based battle against another big villain you play yeah. against them. Um, it's Ultron Sigma at the end of the demo. So and he's meant to beat you, and then it plays a cutscene where it sort of, sort of sets it up like there's this big struggle against uh, Ultron Sigma that you know, you're going to continue to experience within the uh, main okay. game. Interesting. But I thought it was all right, but I didn't think it was a massive leap from what has gone before other than they're actually trying to tell more of a story and have yeah. a lot more character interaction and it's always fun to see the Capcom characters interact with the Marvel characters. I mean that was kind of the big draw of um, Project X Zone which mm. is the Namco Capcom yes. game so yeah. yeah I could see that. 
the, the gameplay with solid visuals were nice, but it didn't feel like it was reinventing the wheel at all, really. Yeah, but you will buy it anyway because it's a fighting game. Uh, yeah, so it's on the list, but it's not. It didn't make me feel like, oh god, that was so amazing. No, I hear this from a lot of I people. I was kind of like, well, I could just play Marvel's Capcom Three if I wanted this experience. Yeah, that's a shame. But yeah. there you go. Maybe there'll be more in the final version that uh, gets me excited. Perhaps, Tom. Perhaps. Oh, any other fighting games? Ah, oh, yeah, Tekken. I've still got to play Tekken. I've got that ready to go. Yeah. When I go back to the UK, I can pick that up. Play a bit of Tekken 7. Ooh la la. Should be good. I still need to pick up Dead or Alive 5 for the PS4. That's mm. one on my hit list. Yeah. I also want to pick up Shadow of Mordor. I can't remember if I mentioned this last week. I actually managed to track down a copy the other day, and to my horror, it was actually a PS3 copy. Oh, no, you don't want that version. Uh, and you I've don't want that version because it's not that. got the Nemesis system in it, which is the entire and bloody it's got point. really uh, poor graphics. Mm-hmm. It's a fun game, but it kind of grew tired of it after a while. I did play it for quite a long yeah. time, though. It's just a bit rinse and repeat kind of thing, and there wasn't much more to it. I'm very curious to play it. I've heard nothing but good things of that Nemesis system, and the second one looks pretty interesting, so we'll see. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Any more for any more? Not really. I don't think I think we've touched upon most of the things that have been on my gaming mind this last week. Yeah. Um mine has been, like I said, Bubble Bobble, which you can check out on the biographic. Mm-hmm. My thoughts on that. Mm-hmm. Played several versions of Bubble Bobble, which is fun. Have you got many versions of Poyo Poyo? Um I have the two for Game Boy, I have one for Game Boy Advanced. I have Mean Bean Machine for Mega Drive somewhere in my yeah, house. Which was the original, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Just the and localized version. I can't remember if I have Pio Pop Fever for the GameCube in my mum's or not, or if that's one of the few yeah. GameCube games I got rid of at some point. I mean, you know about my recent Tetris obsession. Well, oh, so you know it's spilling over into Pio. A little, Poyo. and it's kind of like I should get that Tetris Pio Pio uh, crossover Tom. thing, but I'm sort of like, oh, just hold out and wait till I get a Switch. Which eventually one day I will. I mean, but not anytime soon. Should I just buy the PS4 version and be done with it? It's a I question. think it's cheap enough. I think it's only it's twenty like a, quid. Yeah, it's twenty quid. But I yeah. mean, actually, Poyo. I haven't actually seen Poyo Poyo Tetris for the Switch since I got my copy. Like, no. Uh, it's also still on Amazon for thirty-five quid. But what's that? The Switch one for the Switch one. Yeah, but the Switch would, one's probably one of the more expensive ones. Unless I would you say get that sooner rather than later, because I don't think that's a game that's really going to be around for a hmm. long time. Unless you import the Japanese only uh, Xbox One version, that's that's thirty three pounds on eBay. Yep. Um, and I kind of was thinking, well, I've got a version of Tetris on the PS4 already. I haven't got anything like that on the Xbox. Maybe I should import the Xbox version. But it would be in Japanese. But it'd be in Japanese. You would not be able to enjoy that rich story. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I'm sure well, you would read every single line. But yeah, the Xbox One is region free. It is, yeah. But Japanese. There's not a lot of Japanese exclusives, but that is a Japanese exclusive. Poyo it is. Poyo, uh, Xbox version. Yeah. Yeah. But also, it's cheaper to actually just buy a copy for your PS4. My, oh, and d- it would be in English. Do you know what's expensive? The Vita version, that's quite expensive. I didn't even realise it was a beta version. Yeah. A new one or a Japanese one? You can get European version. Oh, interesting. But it's a little rarer. I Well, yeah. you know, nowhere stocks Vita anymore, so I would imagine mm. it would be. But that, that would give you the same sort of experience as a Switch version. Yeah, of course it would. Mm. Get that. <laughs> but you couldn't play it four player on your telly. You couldn't. There is this sort of like, oh, what to get. And now I've got three uh, PS4 controllers. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, oh, PS4, you know, you sit down and play a bit of three Do player. it, Tom. Do it. Mm. Maybe, maybe in a few weeks' time. I, yeah. I'm spent up for the moment. Exactly. There's N64 games to buy from the <laughs> Japanese. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. I guess that brings us to the end of the podcast. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. If you would like to hear more of us, you can do it in a variety of places. You can do so on tomattack.com forward slash podcast on blastprocess.com as well as the Blast Process YouTube channel now. Mm. Which I assume is youtube.com forward slash blast process. I assume so as well. Yeah. Um <laughs> you can also find us on iTunes. While you're there, please give us a cheeky rate and subscribe. Other than that, you can find us in a variety of other places, such as on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Tom Attack, 
on Twitter at TMACast. And you can also drop us a comment in any of the aforementioned places. Please do. Tom's on Twitter at TomParry11. I'm on Twitter at GameBoyle. Uh, check out some Parry's pickup videos on Blast Process. No podcast next week. No I'm podcast not here. next week. And you can also listen to me babbling about Game Boy games for the entire month because it is your license. And yeah, I'll be covering the first one on this is a spoiler, actually. It will be Amazing Spider-Man for the Game Boy, which is made by Rare. Because there's a Spider-Man movie out, Tom. Don't know if you know that. Oh, I know that. Yeah, so that'll be <laughs> I hope fun. This is good. I really enjoyed that Wonder Woman movie. Saw that. I have Friday not night. seen it yet. Yeah. I, I need to, and I also need to watch Baby Driver. I tell you what I think of Wonder Woman, right? Yeah. A lot of superhero movies where I eat junk food, you know, kind of nice tasting. Yeah. But at the, at the end, you feel empty. Yes. Right? Wonder Woman feels like an, you've got a nice meal. Did, were you and nourished? you feel quite nourished and um, full up and content by the end, you know. You feel like you've had a nice meal. Maybe I will go and watch that tonight instead of I, it, it, it's, it's good. I mean, it's not uh, messy either. It's got a really straightforward, easy-to-follow story. It's got some emotional weight, which a lot of these recent superhero movies, I think, lack. It's so, uh, Are you calling her fat? <laughs> That's just cruel, Tom. Sorry, you set up a joke. I couldn't she, help she, it. She's rather pretty as yes. well, which helps. And and uh, Chris Pine as the uh, lead male is also rather good in it, I thought. Yeah. And something for the ladies too. Yeah. <laughs> easy on the eyes, is that? Yeah, yeah, but Pine. he's a good actor. It, yeah, it's he an is. all-round quality uh, product. I've heard nothing but good things for that. Mm. Baby Driver, I've actually heard mixed things about, and that's why I mm. need to go and see you it. You need to go and find out for yourself if me you like, like it. Edgar because Wright. critically, I think it's been reasonably well received. At least its IMDb score was particularly high. Critically very beginning. well received. Um, but maybe fans expect Edgar Wright to be churning out Simon Pegg-like comedies. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, for me, I, I really like car chase movies as well yeah so. yeah that everything about it it's, it's emphasis on music as well uh does appeal to me so yeah I, I'd, li- I'd like to check it out sometime okay cool i will definitely watch both of them probably but the next mm. time we podcast and mm. let you know on top of matt taff does films <laughs> but until then folks uh you can find us in all those places listen to more podcasts spread the word and until two weeks time game on game on game on